Good morning and welcome to A Moment in the Word with Pastor Philbert Candelaria. I pray that your weekend was blessed, that you were intentional, and that you had a time of refreshment, relaxing, and a time just to regroup yourself for the beginning of this week. You know, this morning, um, with all the emails that I'm getting about Christians who are broken, Christians who feel they're not saved, you know, Christians who have been hurt by the church, compelled my heart to, to do this podcast this morning. A good friend of mine's Ashley Ware, we, we always get into good debates with one another, but we always agree on the same thing, that the Bible is truth. So this morning, my question is, as him and I are going back and forth, what is the purpose of the church? Well, I ask that you take notes, because if you do, this is going to help you. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and the fellowships to the breaking of bread and to prayers. You know, there's the key part. This could be considered the purpose statement of the church this morning. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, which is the word, and to the fellowship, which is gathering together and coming together to strengthen one another, to unite, to regroup, um, just to be prepared for what's ahead of us, what's to come against us, and then the breaking of bread was supping with one another. You know, according to this verse, the purpose and the activity of the church should be teaching biblical doctrine. That's the most important thing that the church needs to do. And here's where I'm going to get and probably step on some toes. But we don't need to worry about the politics. You know, we don't need to worry about the tithing. We don't need to worry about anything that the Holy Spirit is willing to do on our behalf. What we need to do is we just need to teach biblical doctrine. And on top of that, we need to provide a place of fellowship for believers. If you've noticed what happened since COVID, so many believers haven't came back to the church and they're not going to come back unless we change the way the structure of the church is run. I'm not saying change the word of God, but change the structure you know, instead of having cliques in the church, instead of operating it like a business, an empire, you know, a kingdom, we are to operate it with the love and grace and mercy through God's biblical doctrine. And then on top of that, we are to observe the Lord's Supper. And then number four is we are to pray. Pray without ceasing because when you pray, it moves the hand of God. When we pray for our leaders, our church, and we pray for the people to come in who are hurting, the people who have lost hope, God listens to that. But see, a lot of times we want it answered right away, but sometimes God won't bring people into the church until we prepare the church, which is us, until we get spiritually fit and prepared to be able to receive these people. Because I always tell the membership this, um, if you're broken, you can't heal a broken person. You have to be healed in order to, to heal a broken person. If you go to the doctor and you need emergency surgery and there's no doctor available, you're going to die. So we need a doctor who is healthy and available. So when the hurt comes in, the hurt and the loss and the sick and the drug addicted, we have a place for them. See, the church is to teach biblical doctrine so that we can be grounded on our faith. Ephesians 4.14 4, says, So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness, and deceitful uh, schemes. See, that right there breaks it down for us. That we will no longer be infants tossed to and fro. Why? Because we are spiritually mature. The word perfected means teleosis, which means mature. The church is a place of fellowship, people, where Christians can be devoted to one another and honor one another. Romans 12.10 says, love one another with brotherly affection. It also says to instruct one another. Romans 15.14, be kind and compassionate to one another. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you. See, when we begin to do these things in the church, we encourage one another. We begin to grow the church in the direction that man doesn't want it to go, in the direction that man wants it to go, I'm sorry, but in the direction that God wants it to go. The church today is a place where believers can absorb, uh, observe the Lord's Supper, remember Christ's death, what he shed on the cross for us, you know, how he was risen on the third day, 
And that concept of breaking bread also carries the idea of having meals together. And this is a great example how the church promotes fellowship. You know, I've always had, um, I've always been a pastor of a church where after service, everybody gathers in the bread of life or they gather, gather in the cafe and nobody would leave church. They'd be there for hours and we'd just talk about the service. We'd talk about what we're going through, our children, you know, whatever it may be, we were fellowshipping with one another. And that is the final purpose of the church, according to Acts 2.42, is prayer, guys. We need to pray together. You can't play on a football team if you never practice because you're going to lose almost every game. You have to know each other's strengths and weaknesses, who's strong on the line, who's fast as a running back, who can throw the ball. It's no different in the church today. You know what? We need to promote prayer. We need to teach prayer. And not only that. We need to practice prayer. Listen to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That's encouraging for me. Man, that gets me ready to want to go out there and save the world. And we should all be like that. You know, do not be anxious for nothing, people. Put your hearts in the hands of Jesus. You know, Jesus knows how to take care of it. He knows how to guide it. And not only that, he knows where to lead it. And there's another commission given to the church is proclaiming the gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ. And I want to get back to my buddy, Ashley. I love the fact that we can talk about the word We never um, disagree in the word. We never challenge each other or beat up each other with the word. But we have the same idea. The church needs to leave the theological debates with the professors, the theologians, because I don't want anything to do with that. And I don't want to be a stubborn individual where my way is the right way. I have to have an open mind. All I want to do is to lead people to Christ Jesus. That's my commission, proclaiming the gospel of salvation The church is a lighthouse in the community. It points people toward our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The church is both to promote the gospel and prepare its members to present the gospel. Listen to 1 Peter 3.15. But in your hearts, honor Christ, the Lord is holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you yet do it with gentleness and respect. The church is lacking that. We always want to prove our point in a harsh way, in a I'm a right, I'm right way, instead of just having an open mind. And this is the final purpose that I hope that you get out of all this. And I'm way ahead of the schedule here. But listen, the church, the purpose, the final purpose is in James 1.27. It says, religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans, widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is to look after orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. The church is to be about the business of ministering to those in needs. As I preach on Sunday, it doesn't matter you know, what we think of them, because you know what, we actually have to think of what do we think about ourselves. And what matters is if God puts it on your heart to help somebody help them. The church is to equip believers today in Christ. Christ has given us the tools that we need to overcome sin and remain free from the pollution of this world, people. This is done by biblical teaching, Christian fellowship, and here's the third by acting like we are Christ-like, opposed to acting like we are world, like the world. See, we say we're Christians, but we don't live like Christians. So that is the purpose of the church. Paul gave an excellent illustration to the believers in the church of Corinth. The church is is in God's hands. Listen to me. His mouth, his feet are in this world, the body of Christ in 1 Corinthians 12, verse... uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 through 27. See, we belong to do the things of the Father. We are to be doing the things that Jesus Christ would do. 
you know, if he was physically on this earth, it's not what would Jesus do because he already did it. What did Jesus do? The church today is to become Christians that are Christ-like and Christ followers. And here's what I want to share with you. Um, so many people are coming, are sending emails that are just broken down. You know, maybe they're hurt at church. Maybe, you know, they've had a financial difficulty in their life. And I had one email, I won't tell you the name, but she stopped giving because her husband has left her. She's battling a sickness and she stopped giving to the church. So the church basically called her in and told her, you know, you can't head this ministry anymore. And that happened to me at a mega church. You know, I had some stories. You know what God has prompted me to do? I'm going to write a book. And a good friend of mine is going to help me accomplish that because she's a writer. She's a poet. Um, I got called into the office one day and says, you know, you're not giving anymore. I never once was I called and said, hey, what's going on? Can we pray for you? They didn't know that I had lost my job many, many years ago. And I was living off credit cards because at that time, my wife was a stay-at-home mom, wasn't working. Well, there's a lot of people like that, like this young lady, you know, she was asked to step down from her leadership role in the woman's Bible study because she was told that she's not living by example. My question is this, you think God is going to send her to hell because she is dying of a sickness? Her husband has left her and she can't give her money to the church. She's barely making ends meet. What would God do or what did God do? I can tell you something. He looked at those people and said, you whitewashed tombs. You know, who are you? Who are you to judge the hearts of man when you are not God? Listen to this. People are being hurt left and right. Let me tell you why. Because the church went out of being a church who teaches the doctrine, preaches the doctrine, and lives the doctrine. Opposed to all they care about is the more people that come in, the bigger the building gets, the more events we have, the more ministries we have. You know, we have a knitting ministry, we have a basketball ministry, we have a baseball ministry. And in the process of all that, that's good for the ones who are saved. But what about the ones who are dying and perishing in the streets of Albuquerque, of Texas, of California? What about them? Do you think that they care about what ministries our churches have? No, they care about who our God is and how our God operates in us. I pray that we break the norm, you know, because there is a remnant that is rising in the end days and the remnant isn't the ones who are playing church. They won't be anywhere in the scene. It's the ones that are left behind. The ones that said, God, here am I. I don't have no degrees. I have nothing to offer you. You know, I was a sinner. I was saved by grace. And God says, I've been waiting for that. I've been waiting for that because I can use you because you're teachable. And because you're teachable, I can have you be world changers. See, it's the ones who are like, oh, well, look at me, God. I've done this, I've achieved this, I, I, I. Well, that's what caused the devil to be ejected from heaven. So I pray for you today. You know what I mean? We need to take back the church and I don't care about the buildings. There might be a day where I'll open up my living room and have church. It, the building means nothing to me, the name of the building. What means something to me is I have been given the orders that I am the church and what I do with this temple as long as it's alive here on this earth is what God is going to do through me. So get your mindset off of religion, Baptist, Lutheran, um, charismatic, Christian. And I love when people say you're denominational or you're non-denominational. There's no such thing of that in the Bible. There's no such thing as any of that. I am the way, the truth, and the life and no one comes to the Father but through me. That is the church. So I love you all. I'm praying for our pastor to get better. You know that, Lord, put your hand upon him. But I will tell you this. I am fired up. I might come on again tonight. You know, I know you're probably tired of hearing me talk. But I am so fired up because this morning my last text, or email, I'm sorry, was this. You know, my church is Lighthouse Galveston. I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I don't go to church because I don't want to be around these fake people so I have chosen to watch church every Sunday. You know what? I'm going to tell you this. Watch us, but you need to find a church. That hurts my heart because Hebrews 10, 25, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. And you know, it's not their fault that they're watching us on Facebook Live, that they have made us their church. It's the church's fault that they have become so legalistic, so critical minded that they cannot do any earthly good. 
Why? Because they're not focused on how God wants to run his church. They're focused on how they want to run their church. God bless you all here from Texas. And let me tell you, our lingo is I love you all and God bless.